So let's go ahead. We're going to kill the timer. We're going to do a little bit of talking. And here we go. Would you like to know how to make your own book cover DIY style? Would you furthermore like to know the do's and don'ts? Because maybe you're already doing your own book covers and that could be a good thing, but it also can be a very bad thing. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stay tuned to today's video. This is Self Publishing with Dale. And if you'd like to learn more about publishing books that sell and building an unstoppable author brand, make sure that you hit that little subscribe button and turn the bell notification on. So that way you don't miss a single video. And today's broadcast is sponsored by Find Away Voices. And normally I hit the commercial on this. I'm not gonna do that today because I'm gonna speak from the heart here. Find Away Voices has sponsored this channel for the past month. And they didn't have to do that, but they really went out of their way to align themselves with self-publishing with Dale. And I've been approached by numerous brands and deals before, but none like Find Away Voices. They're an audiobook distribution platform that distributes to over 30 different areas, including libraries and retailers and so much more. This includes places like Apple, Audible and Amazon, Google Play, Hoopla, and so much more. And if you're cash strapped, and I know some of you are cash strapped out there, they actually just launched a new program called the Voices Share Program. And all you need to do is pay 50% of the normal costs up front in exchange for 20% of your royalty with the narrator. Now compare that to other ones where you gotta do 50% split, and it's pretty much for the next seven years. Ugh. I kind of like the Voices Share program. It is a better option. If you want more information about Find Away Voices and to even set up an account, it's 100% free to set up an account, by the way, folks. Go to findawayvoices.com slash Dale. From the bottom of my heart, just want to say thank you, Find Away Voices. You guys have been stellar. And folks that are watching this, you're going to end up seeing more information and videos with Find Away Voices and behind the scenes things. So today, let's go ahead and transition right over into how to make your own book cover. You're going to want to make sure you stick around till the end. This is going to be a longer one here, folks. So you hopefully you've packed the lunch. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts ahead of time. And then I'm going to go through the practical application and then we're going to do the live question and answer. There's going to be some timestamps down below. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do stick around because I've got a bonus tip that's gonna help you a lot if you are gonna be doing your own book covers. So with all of that being said, we're gonna start it on out with the problem, all right? The problem is this, folks, and as you can hear from the sirens here, they, they're, they're, sound the alarm, here comes the problem. I've talked about this before, and this includes Frugality versus quality. I know a lot of you out there are probably making your own book cover because you can't afford to get a book designer, a graphic book de or graphic designer for your books, and or you're kind of a type A personality and you're like, I don't want anybody else to do it, I wanna do it all myself, okay? All right, I'm just gonna give you fair warning. I like to do my own book covers, but at the end of the day, I'd rather just hire out. It's a time versus money. I don't have as much time, I've got enough money to hire that out. But I understand there's going to be some of you that want to save some money. Now just remember this, if you're not a graphic designer and you're not very familiar with how to set up a book, ugh, you're going to be sacrificing some of that quality. Okay, I, I don't think there's any one person out there that's going to grab some kind of, kind of a software and just be like, hey, look at this. And then you've got this amazing book cover. And you know, that is not likely to happen. And some of you have fooled yourselves into believing that your covers are great. Possibly not, okay? So think about it, frugality versus quality. Believe it or not, there is numerous book cover designers you can utilize, but since we're talking about how to make your own book cover today, I'm not gonna beat you up. I wanna at least equip you with all the right things so that way you can make an informed decision going forward. So here's the necessary tools. You're going to need some things in order to make this work. Obviously, you don't wanna be using paint to make your programs, okay? So if there's any of you out there that's like, 
hitting the unsubscribe and the thumbs down when I say don't use paint, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel anyways. So the, the thing you're gonna wanna focus on is good graphic design software. Now, graphic design software is a plenty. There is, uh, gosh, let me see here. Um, you got GIMP, you've got Photoshop, you have Photop, you have Affinity, you have numerous types of software out there. GIMP is free, by the way, folks. This is one I started on when I was cash strapped, when I had to do my own book covers. Um, Photoshop is kind of the gold standard for graphic design. Get that. Photop is an online version of that. It's not the same company, but you can still do PSD files, and I've heard a lot of people that swear by it. And then last but not least, big shout out to my boy Kevin McGuire. He actually told me about Affinity some time ago, and they actually have a license you can purchase, lifetime agreement, and you've got it for life and all the upgrades. Uh, I am starting to slowly transition over to Photoshop, but for now, I'm pretty much, I have GIMP mastered, and we're gonna kind of do that in our little tutorial here a little bit later. Uh, then last but not least is going to be uh, image licensing. licensing. Ooh, see, that's not the last thing. Image licensing. You're gonna wanna make sure that you get images that you can get the license to. Now, I'm gonna recommend one of my go-to resources in Deposit Photos. I really like Deposit Photos and I do have an affiliate link at dillinks.com slash DP. And uh, when you sign up for it, obviously little sales get kicked back towards this direction. Uh, and you're looking at images typically running about a buck a piece. It depends on the type that you go with. I typically wait for an AppSumo deal and I just load up on all the deposit photo credits so that way I can get whatever I want. There are some limitations you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting yourself familiar with. So if you're using say Shutterstock or you're using deposit photos or you're using any premium website that you're getting the licensing, read the fine print. There's some of them that have limitations to them. In most instances, whenever I get a, an image of some sort, I try to alter it in a way that is not the original iteration of what it is. So um, next one's gonna be Pixabay. You've got all these free image resources and uh, fair warning, they're free. And they're free for a good reason. And they don't have the greatest assets in the world. And also remember this, chances are very likely that if you're using these images, somebody else is using the images for their cover and their book as well. So you're gonna start to kind of get lost in the shuffle. Next one, font licensing. This is last but not least. You wanna make sure you get some good fonts. Now don't just stick with whatever the graphic design software gets you because those are okay, but you're gonna to wanna to find something that are unique to you and unique to your niche. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what's gonna be unique to your niche. Um, and if I say niche or niche, hey, look, I I'm just gonna stick with this. So if I say niche, I'm sorry, I I'm gonna sound like a stupid American, so be it. Um, any rate, 1001fonts.com, one of my favorite go-to resources. They have some premium as well as some free fonts. Make sure you download these fonts, by the way, and hang on to the assets. You want the README file, you can always put it up into a cloud or an external hard drive. Defont.com is a good one I've heard of. Uh, Font Squirrel is another one. If you have a specific website that you go to for fonts, please drop it, the name of it down inside the comments. I definitely would love to hear from you. Uh, let's avoid links because YouTube gets real fickle about that. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much all of the necessary tools you're gonna need. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the do's and don'ts. So we're gonna burn through these do's and don'ts. Do expect to put long hours into this. If you're not a graphic designer, then chances are very likely you're gonna be grinding this out. You're going to get frustrated, you're gonna pull your hair out, you're gonna end up with a head full of hair like mine, ooh, and uh, it's, it's gonna get frustrating. Chances are likely, if you have something like the software like GIMP, there's not as many tutorials on that as say there is Photoshop. So there's going to be that exchange of time versus money again. You can invest in something like Photoshop and have a wealth of free tutorials online that you can take advantage of. But then you invest in a free software like GIMP, it's far less as far as getting some of that stuff figured out. Don't, whatever you do, rush it. I can't tell you how many times I've had some indie author come up to me and they say, um, I don't understand, I'm not getting any sales. And then I go look, I see their book cover, and I'm like, what, what is this? This, the, the, like, this 1990s doesn't even begin to put this into an era of what you had put it, like, did you get this done on your Radio Shack computer? This is not good. And they typically are like, ah, I just, I whipped it together really fast. Book covers should never be rushed. 
If you find yourself doing a book cover in an hour, you're doing something wrong or you're very, very, very professional and you know exactly what to do. In that instance, you're probably not watching this video. So don't rush it. Take your time. You're gonna find that it's gonna probably take a few tweaks here and there. And some of the tips I'm gonna give you for do's and don'ts, it's gonna find out why you're not gonna to wanna to rush it. So take your time, all right? It's, it, I'm not trying to tell you you should take the next five years, but you shouldn't do it in five minutes. And that's gonna do a grave injustice. And if you're one of those types of people that are going, why are my books not selling? How long did it take you to make a cover? If it took you a couple hours, or if it took you six hours and you're a newbie, then you're probably doing it wrong. All right, do's and don'ts number two. Do get peer review. Reach out to people within the indie author community, maybe even some readers, and have them give you some feedback. This is why I say don't rush through it because you're gonna give it to somebody that is unbiased, all right? Somebody that's going to tell you like it is. Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's hit, dude. Like, I don't understand it. I had a coaching client not too long ago. He sent me a cover that he had done by his graphic designer. And in theory, it was good. I like looked at it, the layout was great, the uh, font choice was awesome, but then like the picture, the picture was like, it seemed like it was a book on meditation, but it was a book about self-help. And I'm like, your imagery is communicating something completely different. And he was like, oh my gosh, I see it now. This is why peer review is critical to you getting your book cover nailed. Now, don't rely on family and friends. I can tell you, I'll be able to show just about any book designs that some of my family and friends, and most times they're gonna go, oh, that's cool, that's awesome. Or they'll go, oh, great job. Or you should use this picture in it instead. The issue is they're not in our industry. So chances are likely they're not gonna give you very good critique or any type of criticism. They're also going to be kind of attached to you. And in essence, they're afraid to hurt your feelings. They're afraid to tell you, oh, that's it. You're gonna have that one friend that every now and then will tell you it's hit. Like if I get hold of my brother, I'll show him a cover. He's gonna go, that's bad, bro, that's bad. He just pulls no punches, but he's probably the exception to the rule. Most instances, your peers uh, are gonna work out. Someone who's in the indie author community. Friends and family, uh, not so much. Do's and don'ts number three. All right, we got a three more after this. Use graphic design software. I already told you the necessary tools. Get yourself those things. In most instances, with the exception of the one I said about PhotoP, you're gonna have to download them to your PC or your Mac. Um, it's going to take up some room on there. That's okay. It's worth it. And here's the nice thing. So for instance, when I get on a flight tomorrow, I'm gonna be able to work on some graphic design assets, uh, primarily working on some YouTube thumbnails, things like that. Um, I don't need to rely on internet in order to do that. So if you find that you're relying on internet-based systems, you're going to hamstring yourself in the process. Don't use Cover Creator. And there's no exception to this rule. None whatsoever. Cover Creator's put together for those people that don't want to take their business seriously. If you're just a hobbyist and you don't care about the money, you're probably not watching this video. But because you did watch this video, I'm gonna assume that you wanna make sure that you get a very good cover. The cover creator templates that are over through KDP, that are on Canva, they're on all these other ones. They just don't cut it, folks. And here's the problem. Everyone else is using it. Everyone else is using it. So all of these different templates you're just gonna blend in. You're gonna get pretty much mixed up in all of the noise and no one's gonna be able to pick you out. No one's going to be able to take you seriously. And I got some exceptions to the rule. There's some people that just, they know what to do when they get a hold of Canva and they can make it really pop. But I'm gonna tell you, that is 0.01% of the time. Yeah, 99.99% of the time, those that use Cover Creator or Canva or any of these other just simple cookie cutter templates, uh, it's not good. 
it doesn't look good on you. And if you put all of your hard work into this manuscript and did all that time into it, one of the greatest disservices you can do is to put a cookie cutter on top of it. There we go. Stamp, stamp, stamp. At least take time and learn how to use the graphic design software and make mistakes, then you can at least tweak it. With the cover creator things, it's not so much. You're pretty much stuck right in what they pretty much told you you can only do with that. All right, do's and don'ts. Number four, do know when to fold. There's gonna come a point, maybe you're three, four days into this, and you've probably put eight hours each day on it, and you're literally just ready to commit yourself to an insane asylum because you can't figure out how to do a mask, or maybe you can't figure out how to rotate your lettering. You know, something's missing from it. You gotta know when to fold it. And here's the thing, this is where you gotta start to kinda go, okay, I tried. You could take a step back and come back to it, or take what you have, export it into a JPEG or PNG, get a hold of a graphic designer, somebody that works with book covers primarily, and say, this is the general idea that I'm shooting for. In fact, I do this quite a bit. I'll just kind of do a general layout and say, could you make this better? And I'll send it to them and let them kind of figure things out. By the way, it's a good idea too, that if you send that, send like three or four different examples of what you're shooting for. Some books that are already on the market that are kind of doing that. That helps out your graphic designer so that way they're not like going, this, no, no, this is a hard no, you don't want this. All right, next thing, I think you know this, just don't grind it out, don't grind it out. Life's too short to be doing book covers for you know weeks at a time. Let the book cover designers handle that, all right? I understand you wanna make your own book cover, but that there, there does come a point where you gotta kinda say, okay, enough, check please. All right, do's and don'ts, number five. This is something I see a lot. And I'm just gonna kinda of intermix this right now. Too many fonts, all right? One to two fonts, tops, all right? Your front cover should not be suffering from multiple personality you know, issues, okay? It needs to be one to two fonts. You look at any great cover, they're typically gonna have like one font. No more than two fonts. You start going three, you're going overboard. You're, you're not probably making the most of the real estate that you have. So stick to that one to two. And kind of in the same vein, make sure it's a readable font, okay? And when I say readable, there's a, oh gosh, there's like a one out I think I found on 1001fonts.com. It's called King's Things, and it looks really cool. It's almost like that, um, you know, ransom lettering type deal. And it looks awesome. I would never use it for my book cover because it's just unreadable it, and it also just, it doesn't work. And so you just need to kind of look at readable fonts. Can you take your cover, put it on a cell phone, shrink it down, put it right in line with all the other covers that would be on the marketplace and then look and see, okay, is this going to blend in or is this going to pop out off the page and can somebody read it when it's small? Okay, so think about that. Whenever you're creating your covers, it needs to be readable on mobile, folks, because there's a lot of people that buy mobile, and I know for a fact, I probably do about 80% of my shopping on my phone. All right, do's and don'ts number six. Honor the niche, all right? If you're gonna be in, let's say, home workouts for women, then look at the other home workouts for women. If you're gonna be in science fiction military, Look at those covers. Honor the niche. One of the biggest mistakes that I made was, I, I'm a big comic book nerd. I, I grew up, I used to collect lots of them, hundreds of them. Not anymore these days, but I decided at one point or another, I saw Nerd Fitness doing his stuff, essentially where he'd had his covers and it was like comic book style. And I was like, I'm gonna do it like that. Well, there was a huge difference between myself and Nerd Fitness. He already had an established following. And so when I tried to do it, sales dropped like crazy. The cover looked awesome, it was great. And even friends and family were like, that's awesome, you should publish that. And I listened. And 
I actually had a Fiverr book cover that was pulling me in hundreds to thousands of dollars per month. And then you know what ends up happening? I put this stupid comic book version of it and sales plummeted, like dropped. And I let it ride for 30 days. Put it back to the old Fiverr cover. It came right back up. Honor the niche. Follow what everybody else is doing because then people can kind of say, okay, I'm looking for home workouts for women. They're scrolling through. Oh, there's this one with this comic book cover. Oh, that, I don't know, what the heck is that? Uh, I'm gonna go, oh, there we go. This one that actually has a woman on the cover and has weights and it has a tape measure of some sort. This makes sense. All right, fantastic, I'm gonna buy this one. What's the deal with that comic book cover one? Honor the niche, folks. And here's the thing is, don't do what I did. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't just think that you can look at one person who's doing that particular thing and go, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do it too. Just try to get it to where people know what to expect so your audience can find you instead of you getting lost because you're doing a comic book cover and you're trying to reinvent the wheel. Number seven, do three versions. Three versions, and I've told this to a lot of my coaching clients before, I'm gonna tell you as well. Three versions is going to give you options. And the reasons why I say three versions is you're going to want to make sure that you pull. This is one of the times you can probably ask family and friends. This is one of the times, you know, but go into your peer groups. Find out in the indie author community. If you've got an email list, reach out to your email list, social media, get people to vote for it. And having those three iterations helps build, first of all, awareness of what you should choose. And the next thing is also builds hype and a buzz around your upcoming release. Having those three all also gets it to where, let's say you launch your book. You're 90 days in, it is sucking. It's not doing worth the darn. You now have another two options you can cycle through. Now, I'm not telling you to have three different derivatives. So you're having like one where it's purple lettering and the next one is yellow lettering and the other one's green lettering. That's not gonna work. We're talking completely different, but still honoring the niche. So get those three versions. Don't stick with just one version. I see so many people just doing one versions because they're trying to, first of all, either A, say time, remember the whole don't rush it thing, or B, they're trying to save money. And this is one of those instances, you'll thank me later when you get three versions put out and you build buzz around that and hype around it. And here's the nice thing is, let's just say it goes really well. And another year from now, you decide you wanna release a second edition. Maybe you have a bonus chapter that you put in there or you decide to do a rewrite of it. Now you've got a different cover, you can go ahead and release that second edition with that new cover and you didn't have to do any extra time, it's already set up for you. Pretty cool, right? So those are seven do's and don'ts. This is kind of the informational portion of today's broadcast. I don't wanna kind of, first of all, plug real fast. Every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime, Universal Time, Coordinate minus four, starting September 21st, we are gonna be live here every Saturday on YouTube. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you join me. Put it on your calendar. All you gotta do is visit dalelinks.com slash live anytime I'm live. I'm live on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Daytime, and I'm also live starting September 21st on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime. So mark your calendars, get those on there right away. And I just wanna let you know that the podcast recordings that used to be on Saturdays on Twitch have officially moved to Mondays. Starting next Monday, that is the 16th of September, Every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime, we're going to be at twitch.tv slash self-publish where we do the um, podcast recording. You'll see me with my large white and purple headphones and the fancy NT1A microphone, and we're going to go through and record that. There will be no more simulcasts, so if you want to catch the podcast recordings, you need to come over to twitch.tv slash self-publish. You're not familiar with Twitch. Listen, folks, I got you covered. Just go over to twitch.tv slash self-publish. You're going to follow self-publish. You're also gonna turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single one of the videos. And you can even subscribe for free with Amazon Prime. Now subscriptions help support the channel because they're literally a value of $5. If you already got Prime, guess what? It's free to you, it's free. So you could just give back to the channel if you've ever kind of wondered, like how can I give back to Dale? It's one of the ways. By the way, you can find out how to set up a Twitch um, uh, account. It's 100% free, there's no gimmicks. 
It's a lot of fun, you'll discover. If you did that, just go over to dalelinks.com slash twitch101. You'll get more information on how to navigate it and use Twitch. And then you can see how you can get bits and you can subscribe and how to follow, how to unfollow, so many other things. That's actually with my other channel if you haven't had the opportunity to watch it with live streaming tech. Alrighty, I said I was gonna do a bonus tip. It's time for the bonus tip. Okay, I always like pressing the bonus tip button. I always try to work this in a way. Uh, some of you may have watched this channel long enough. You might have heard me refer you over to this one before, but there is a gentleman, his name is Derek Murphy. Derek Murphy's actually been in the space way longer than I have, and he actually has a channel right here on YouTube, and he's kind of a chill, relaxed guy, um, does fiction author work, uh, he does graphic design for book covers, and he actually has a free course on DIY book covers. By the way, I'm not getting paid to say this. Derek didn't even coerce me. He doesn't even know I'm probably saying anything about it. Go to DIYbookcovers.com. It's a 100% free course. He shows you how to make some covers that will pop. And he uses, of all things, this is nuts, Microsoft Drive, then it won't affect you unless you take specific actions. Um, I'm gonna probably, it's gonna be at least easily about a five to 10 minute video. I'm gonna launch sometime, I'm hoping about afternoon. I'm gonna get up bright and early, shoot this video, but stay tuned to it. Publish Drive has changed. They are no longer doing revenue share. So there's a